So that's another short on the Russell. Fail to get higher could often lead to a move down. So now let's just see if this trade can get some downward motion. The tick, the dollar tick we were looking at a moment ago is still living above the zero line or right at the zero line. There has been one bar that closed below it, but so far the pressure is still up. Yeah, I am taking it because those reversals, the odds go up the more they show up. And with the fake or false breakout to the upside and the inability to follow through, all those things lead to good odds to go down. So whether it wins or loses, it's a trade I'm typ typically going to take. So you had a reversal here, right? It's really close. Look at all these reversal trades. Of course, it's a strong trend day up. All these reversal trades clearly not working. Are, that's all before we started trading, right? This is the one that we... Uh, no, that was, even, that was even before the session, so didn't take that one. Took this one. But then we had a move higher, breaking out to new highs with no follow-through. And now coming back down... That's that's a trade I want to be in. You know, it still could lose, but I like the odds. Meanwhile, look at the ES. The ES with a couple winners in a row. Got long here. Came up, hit that perfect target. Well, actually, it just missed. Missed by a tick. And then it got short here. And now it's hitting target two perfectly. So there's a good example of maybe not getting filled. And then it goes up a tick or two or three. What do you do? And a trade that only has five ticks to target two. There, it just traded through. So you would have been filled if you waited. A little patience, but it doesn't always do that. I mean, if this 50 starts to roll and this could get you know down to make a new swing low, I feel pretty good about this trade. This could set up a strong move. We had a pretty big move up. This could be the beginnings of a, a strong move down. Who knows? I mean, it's got to get through support. The ES definitely getting a target. And the Russell now closing below the 50 moving average and getting to money management. I'm moving my stop. I'm getting pretty close to power of quitting here. Order fill. And now I am at power of quitting. I just hit my target. So I'm finished, and I am positive. Two trades, a loser and a winner. Power of quitting. And I talked you through what I liked about this trade, so hopefully this is kind of in the same spirit as the NQ trade that I, you know, the two I showed you yesterday in the video. Hopefully you guys saw it. You might want to watch it. I think it was a good one, just as far as what I look for. Anytime you get a breakout that is like a head fake, this is a breakout to new highs, new daily highs, not only swing highs, but it broke out of the sideways channel but didn't go very far. I mean, basically just taking out stops, the last buyers, you know, taking out the last buyers. <laughs> and then it turned the other way, and usually a fake breakout one way leads to a good strong move in the other direction. Look at that target. I mean, that's as perfect as it gets. You know you're getting filled. And it's, it's not a strong winning day for me. I think I only netted like six ticks, six, seven ticks, six or seven ticks per position. But you take what the market wants to give you. I mean, I'd rather be six ticks up than 24 ticks down. No, Claude, it's about hitting a target two winner and having a positive result. So it's, it's not about a fixed number of ticks because that's just too rigid. That doesn't give you the dynamics that you need to dance with the market. The, 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 the philosophy that we use with power of quitting is to take what the market wants to give you, not what you want from the market. And so the, the losing trade, of course, grabbed 22 ticks. But my, the winning trade to target two gave me 32 ticks. So that's a six tick, a 10 tick positive result with a single position to target two, which is pretty much how I trade when I'm, when I'm trading uh, in the trade room.
And also, I'm just trying to incubate a small account because what I did, I'm so fed up with Thinkorswim's platform that I funded my TradeStation account. So I'm trading with TradeStation and trying to build a small account just to show how it's done as a model so that everyone can kind of follow the same model. And it's not anything I haven't taught or told or talked about, sticking with the small risk. So, you know, I started with a little over 5,000 bucks and now I'm up over 8,300 and I've been doing it basically since Spotlight came out. So, what's that, a 60% gain? Got a 60% gain in my account since uh, less than two months, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm still I'm trading the crude oil report and think or swim. Eventually, I'll transition away from that. But right now, I'm trying to keep my trade station account pure and just go with a real simple trade plan and just practice what I preach, basically, and just prove it. <laughs> Well, Frank, it's just one contract in, in Trade Station because that's all I was capitalized for, but I'm, I'm trying to get to two contracts. So as soon as I get, my goal was to get to 10 grand and then go to the second contract, but I might do it sooner. <laughs> I might do it at 9,000. But the thing is, I'm going to be away for a few weeks. You know, like I said, I'm going to be traveling. So that's, you know, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do on the road because I'm going to be in East Coast time. I don't have the benefit of the three-hour time difference. Here on the West Coast, I can trade and still go about and do what I got to do throughout the day. But once I'm on the East Coast, I'll have to do stuff right during during the prime trading time. So I'm, I'm going to miss a lot of opportunity there. So that's the only thing that's got me a little concerned as far as, you know, what I do as far as the next few weeks anyway. Mike, it's always target two. Target two... When I get the when I when I do a second contract, I think I'm gonna go target two and target three, and then every now and then I might take off target three and try to pick up a runner, on a trailer depending on the type of uh, trade that it is. But like with crude oil today, I had target two, and a trailer. When I do the crude oil report, I usually do target two and a trailer. Uh, John, that was with the Russell. It's always the Russell. And I've been putting the trades up on Facebook nearly every day. This particular trade that we're in on the Russell, this is the kind of trade you may want to trail because if it happens to start stair-stepping down, 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 I mean, look how far down the 200 is. If it gets down to there, that would be worth going to as a target, right? With the 50 rolling over, that could set up a really big move to the downside. It doesn't mean that's going to happen, but if it does happen, wouldn't it be nice to trail? I mean, it took a long time. Like, here's a good example of the same thing. This was yesterday, obviously, but when, it, when the 50 moving average starts going up like this and you see it, it's going to come up and maybe hit the 200 and then keep on going. Obviously, the trailer, that's a good time to trail. Because that's that could be the beginning of a big move, and that could be happening here, right? This could start rolling over. So that might be a time where you go to target two and you trail, and you, instead of target three. But but look what's happening on this Russell trade. The stop held. It's pushing lower. It might hit target three, and that might be as far as it goes. But if you're trailing, yeah, target three is a nice place to exit. 44, you know, 4.4 points. But if it keeps going, which there's a good chance it will, you know, failing to break higher could lead to a strong move in the opposite direction. That's the kind of situation you may just decide to use the trailer for a second position. You know, you roll the dice. You got a little bit more corroborating information that might, you, you know, you might decide, well, if this one goes, it could be a really strong winner. Let's trail. Doesn't mean it's going to. Remember, when I'm using the active trader window and when I'm using Thinker, uh, Trade Stations Matrix, I've got multiple windows. I've got one with my template. I've got one with single market orders on Trade Station. I've got another chart that does have the chart trading enabled, and I did move my stop down from here to here with my Trade Station chart trading. I didn't do it on the matrix. I grabbed it because I only got the single position still. So check out the trailer. Here we are. 
hitting up on target three. It's going in slow motion. We're one tick shy. There it is, target three. That's a good place to exit, but it could go further. And this is the kind of setup that has potential to be large. And that might cause, and of course, you leave this trailer one tick above. You want to be above the spike. You're going to trail. You want to hide your stop and try to stay in the trade as long as you can. We'll just watch it and see if it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. All right, look at the move. Look at the move in the Russell. And this is kind of what I mean about allowing yourself to just improve and learn what the price action is telling you and give yourself the opportunity to just get better at what you do. I mean, I've seen this so many times. It, it's no mystery. We've all seen it. But, but here's, like I said, if you're trading two positions, you may decide on this particular type of setup to trail. We'll see how far it goes. So here's what my setup looks like, guys. This is a stand-up, you know, I got my treadmill. I'm usually walking. This is at stand-up height. Behind me, I have another trade desk with another computer and other multiple monitors that I can sit at, and I could also sit on this. I'm sitting at a bar stool, comfortable bar stool. But here's my long matrix on the portrait, right? That's an active trader window here. Trade station matrix. Got some stuff over here, single market order for crude oil. This is the trade room that I'm projecting, some other monitors I'm looking at. And then this, this changes throughout the day depending on what I'm watching or what I'm doing. And then from another angle, that's my treadmill control panel right there. Got some great original artwork that I inherited hanging all around me. Behind me is my monster drum set. <laughs> Thanks. I've had this for so long. I mean, I, I remember when I first set it up, it was pretty exciting. Now it's just just my office <laughs> well this is my garage you know I turn my garage into my man cave my office my everything because I figure I deserve the space more than my car which is perfectly happy out in the driveway <laughs> no it's costing me money that's right so if you see that the trailer has now made more money than target three that's good hey Veronica four monitors is good not too many people do what I do I'm calling a trade room, I'm, you know, developing strategies, I'm doing other things besides just trading. Four monitors should be more than adequate. Yeah, Frank, that's fine. That Again, it's a matter of you want to be able to see your chart, execute your trade, and do it efficiently with minimal motion to avoid mistakes. Rafat, on average, a few minutes. Yesterday was eight minutes. Obviously, today is a lot longer. I mean, I'm in the trade room with you guys. But the crude oil trade was how long? How long did that take? There you go. Maybe less. Let's see. Crude oil is still trading very well since the report, by the way. There's been a lot of good trades. We got in here. Right in there, it was like 10.32 exactly and hit target three at, you know, less than 20 seconds later. And then finally stopped out not even a minute into the trade. This is all done in a minute, and had you been trailing, it just moved down again, and it got past target four, right? We were looking at it right here, and look, it's gone down three more steps. You could see them coming, guys. It's just a matter of, you know, knowing what to look for, but you could always look for the false breakout one direction and expect a nice move in the other direction. The odds are really good on those, especially at the tail end of a trend. And that's going to happen on most markets and charts and time frames. Very slow moving, but markets don't care about time. That's just us perceiving time. Human beings don't make good traders for that reason. One of the that's one of the reasons. All right, what else, guys? Anything else? Are we done? I think we're done. Uh oh, you mean about the the uh, second short there or I mean the, the breakout that didn't go and then yeah yeah I mean you could have with this green trade you could have made an argument just like I did on the NQ right to wait for it to come up and retest and then if it comes down again then take it but it would have done that it did come up and retest and it did come down and give you the entry again it still would have been a losing trade But the next one, 
you know, like when you ask me, are you taking it? Absolutely. That's the kind of trade I like. Yeah. Look at it go. If anyone's still trailing, hitting the line, there it is. I mean, talk about a glimpse into the future, yeah? It's an EMA, but you're right. It just hit the 200. But, I mean, if you want a little crystal ball, price action tells you a lot. And, and look at this. Again, more relevance to what I was talking about in that video. You have an action move down. You have a reaction into the signal line or balance line, this time going into both the balance line and the 50 moving average, finding its resistance to set up a subsequent action to the downside, which tends to mirror the first action, right? Another reaction into the balance line again, setting up another action move down, and does it have enough to keep going? We'll just have to find out and see, right? But it's action, reaction, subsequent. This is a good place to, to sell. This would be a good trade to be in right here. Now, how would you take that trade? Does anyone know how you take this trade? Like, what if you wanted to add to your position or you missed the first move and it comes up and it hits? There's your reaction. It starts selling off here. You got your three exhaustion points. Anyone know how to take that trade right there? What you could do is you can turn on the calculator, just double click open, you know, double click to open it and say, see where it says use add ons? Hit true. Because those dots are right on that 50 moving average. It's going to give you an add on trade. And there it is. It's a perfect target, too. See that? And look where target three happens to be. You hit them both. Hit them both on the nail. There, it just stopped out. And and stopping out way below target four in the original trade. Yeah, the entry was breaking the new lows, but it was also set it was also the the subsequent move had already begun. Action, reaction, subsequent action is predictable and tradable in a high percentage trade.